we fight how we train. In this video, we're going to be talking about why Spence falls over when he throws his right hand, what training habits he has, um, what makes Crawford so great, all this stuff. we got a lot of training clips to look at, a lot of stuff to talk through uh, in this kind of deep dive training video. Okay, so first off, what do I mean? A lot of times, Spence will throw his rear hand, boom, and then he'll fall off balance. There'll be all this recovery time where he has to reset, okay? Fundamentals, number one, we, we throw a punch, we drive our weight from the ground with both feet, up into the into our opponents and then we have to get our weight back to the ground and all the time that it takes him to get planted is the time that it takes him uh, to get back to the ground okay so he can do another move by driving off the ground with both feet now again um, this concept is a new concept that I teach in the Fouch boxing combat system if you want to learn everything you want you need to know about two foot punching and all that stuff and more importantly how to generate power uh, check out the Fouch Boxing Combat System. We're going to be going over some of the basics of that stuff because uh, this is not really a concept that's taught. People kind of stumble upon it. And we're going to be talking about the drastic differences between a fighter like Crawford and Errol Spence, even though on the surface they do very similar stuff, okay? Sometimes, sometimes, you know. Um, but it all starts with the feet. And on average, Errol Spence is actually a pretty good... Uh, let's see, is this, not this one, is actually a pretty good athlete, obviously, um, and he has pretty good training on average. Um, and he's got a very basic heavy bag routine um, in which he's going to be trying to just drive his weight from the ground into the bag as often as possible. It's not particularly fast, it's not particularly um, fancy or exp explosive, I'll say, but it's very consistent. It's a very consistent amount of weight that he's going to get into each punch, okay? Driving from his weight from the ground into his opponent or into the bag in this case. But one thing I want to point out is uh, only beginners hit standing heavy bags. And I want to talk about how undynamic this heavy bag routine is in terms of uh, the bag not really moving a lot. Errol Spence is doing a good job of circling it, but there's not a lot of swinging of the bag there's not a lot of activity real quick um, and when the bag moves away from us this is an opportunity for us to chase the bag so that we can learn how to set up our offense okay now as the bag is moving away from him and it's already at this peak here it's going to be moving and Errol Spence in order to keep this pace and this rhythm he has to control it take a step control it take a step and then throw a punch and he's going to keep that pace and that beat and now beat 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 I want you guys to think about how similar this is to every single time you've ever seen Errol Spence take lead foot dominance against someone. Beat, 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 right? And this is about as dynamic as Errol Spence's offense winds up being. This is about as much as he ever winds up ever chasing the bag. Okay, and this is important because this is why he doesn't usually get lead foot dominance and throw leaping right hooks and chase his opponent and follow them. He'll just wait to get back on the line and get back to this very steady pattern, right? Boom, and now the bag, instead of chasing the bag because the bag moved away and continuing his sequence with a leaping shot because now he's on the front foot, his weight's on the right side, that's all that's left, he waits for it to come back and re-interact with it. Okay, instead of continuing the sequence. And again, this is just one of those patterns um, that's responsible for, you know, a huge part in the way that Errol Spence uh, looks to fight his opponents, feels comfortable moving um, dynamically around his opponents, right? Having them come into his line, he interacts with them, counter, boom, 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 right? Or they're moving away, and again, <clears throat> when they're moving away, one, one, two. Okay, very, very, very common pattern of movement from him, very, very common uh, pattern of movement in the fights, okay? And this is how he chooses to chase his opponents, okay? Again, it's not very dynamic, it's not very flashy, he's not using the leaping shots. Um, and this is why when he throws those punches, he's not very good with them. It's because he doesn't practice them and uh, on the heavy bag. And here's the thing, where do we do most of our boxing? Where do we get to do most of our training? It's from the heavy bag, right? So having a dynamic heavy bag routine, one that's going to allow you to perform all the moves, um, is a necessity. If you, can, if you can't hit a swinging heavy bag, you're a beginner. You're a beginner, okay? Um, and now, 
uh, real quick, we're just going to touch on that just a little bit because Terrence Crawford is someone who's really good at all that stuff, okay? Uh, this scene here, right, where his opponent is chasing him and he jumps off the line, boom, boom, and throws the sequence here. Same one he knocked out uh, Sean Porter with. Same one that he dominates um, um, Indongo with. And this is not the exact one, but pull, boom, boom, right? I think he just throws one punch in that sequence, but... Uh, Terrence Crawford is very good at fighting the bag while it's moving away. Okay, now real quick, here's a clip of Terrence Crawford getting on the line and snapping on the bag. And a few very athletic moves here I want to talk about is combining the two and the three together, right? So now he's throwing these punches fast and he's going to go two, three, right? And now he's penduluming on the bag. But more importantly, Combining this punch here is a very, very athletic move, getting a power shot, power shot into, into the bag um, and connecting those beats. And we see Crawford training it, and now he's kind of going kind of nuts, right? And notice he's chasing the bag and following it, combinations, lots of things, chasing the bag, penduluming off with it. Just a lot of things going on in here. Just a ton of things going on in here. And he's able to content, condense a lot of his workout simply by, you know, I like to say, you know, kind of going ape shit, right? Just beating on the bag and just doing, you know, exploding, right? It's a big philosophy of mine is just, you know, throw your hardest punches every day, right? Explode on the bag. And now I guys, I want you guys to like look at what he's doing and look at what he's, how he looks moving through the line here right, and exploding, chasing the bag, he's getting all these patterns, pendulum steps forward, pendulum steps backward, um, and now I want you guys to take a look at this clip here real quick, uh, his opponent's going to chase him, he jumps off the line, boom, 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 and I want you to see the snaps on these punches, don't they look eerily similar to what he's practicing on the bag here, again, we fight how we train, right, and this is one of the ways that Crawford is able to practice faster, snappier punches. Okay, now, I want you guys to think about what you guys see here in, in this video here. And I want, you to, I want you to ask yourselves, have you ever seen Crawford or ever seen Spence do anything as, as fast or as athletic, as dynamic, right? And this is one of the reasons, this routine here, just his ability right, to move around the bag and control it, understand where all the beats are. As the bag is moving, he's like, okay, how do I stay on rhythm? Beat, 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 And he has something to do, and he has a place. He knows how to chase the bag and stay on the line with it when he wants to. Get off the line when he wants to. Chase the bag. Follow it. Control it. Find heavy shots. Control it. Walk. Find heavy shots. Pendulum with it. Boom, heavy shots. It just has a brilliant routine that allows him to practice a lot of the sequences in combat, but also at a high level, right? The bag never gets so far away from him um, that he can't interact with it, that he can't do something, right? Now, there are different styles of heavy bag work. There's different styles of this, and you know that's obviously like more like a burnout for Crawford than like exactly part of his routine, right? even though it could be, right? But we're going to be taking a look at a lot of clips. Now, uh, so don't go anywhere because we got a lot more Crawford to go, but what I want to take a look at is these rear hands. Again, the bag is moving away from him. Bah, left hand, jab, jab, left hand, okay? Very common patterns of movement from, from Spence, uh, not very dynamic, yada, yada. That's how he chases guys, yada, yada. But what I want to talk about more importantly Right Again, everything we do is predicated from our ability to go up, down, up, right? And he's jabbing with the, and as he goes with the jab, he's going to go down, jab, down with the probe, and then up with the rear hand. And then now what? His weight has to go back down because he finished his move. And now there's no move for that weight, right? There's nothing that goes with that move. Okay, and this is a really important idea because this is the reason why Errol Spence falls off balance is because after he throws his rear hand, boom, if there's no bag here, he doesn't have a move that he's going to be doing next. His next move is just get his weight back to the ground. But when he does this in front of an opponent that's trying to counter him, he's going to do it really quickly. Okay? Now, if he misses the punch or he lands the punch or whatever, 
he's not throwing his weight off the line quickly in this sequence, okay? When he throws that rear hand, and, and let's just go ahead and watch him throw some rear hands and then just exit the line right after, right? There's no rhyme or reason as to how he manages his weight post-punch, right? Again, um, I like to teach boxing in three phases. There's the phase where we get on the line, right? One, then we can we attack the line, two, and now we get off the line. And notice, he just takes a step off the line with his back foot um, and doesn't have any of the motion or the momentum of his down-up motion, okay? Now, um, this is important because this means that his, his priority after throwing his rear hand is not to get his weight back to the ground, okay? It shows that he doesn't understand that that's the first thing that he needs to be practicing. And we can see him doing these patterns and just kind of exiting the line immediately, uh, left hand, right? And then he kind of falls off the line into another shot, falls off the line, right? He didn't utilize any of the down-up motion. He didn't hide his head anywhere. <clears throat> and again, when he doesn't have a bag and he doesn't know that his goal is to be getting his weight to the ground, he's going to have a lot of sequences like this where he falls off balance and see how he, he naturally brings his weight down. Right, But he doesn't understand that he needs to do it in a correct footwork structure. He doesn't understand when he brings his weight down here where his shoulders are supposed to be, where his head's supposed to be, where his feet are supposed to be. Um, and again, if you guys want to learn all that stuff, check out the Fouts Boxing Combat System. I have an entire drill that teaches um, exactly how you want to learn how to get on the line, how to control it with an attack, with the probe, or with the power punch, and then how to exit the line all safely, all with that one, two, three theory. Um, keeps boxing very simple. Okay, check it out, Faust Boxing Combat System. Um, but also, other things, other factors is Errol Spence doesn't know what to do with his hands when he's punching, right? To generate power, to generate snap. Um, and this also causes him to fall more off balance. It also causes him to lose control of his, of his weight because his weight is going to be flung in these weird directions. He's not going to be able to end his weight transition in his punches. <clears throat> now, um, and again, that causes us to wind up getting hit, right? Falling off balance even for a beat. And we can see what happens when our opponent falls off balance uh, even for a beat, throwing their rear hand, right? Here it is. Bop, bop, bop. Right? Crawford's going to hit you. Crawford's going to hit you with three of these bad boys here. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, right? These big shots here that he's hitting the bags. And if you guys can hear, see this, look at the intensity that he's training with. It's beautiful. It's incredible, okay? Um, just brilliant rhythm. Ah, super, super fan. Super fan of Crawford. Uh, very, very good fighter. Um, now, again, uh, Spence falls off balance after he throws his rear hand because there's no patterns for him, right, after he throws it, right? What does he do? How does he get his weight back to the ground? Rear hand, right? Notice he's not driving off the ball of this back foot, right? And then where? right back to this reset position. But there's a beat there where you don't get to reset, right? Your opponent's going to be attacking you, um, and you're not going to always be able to move your head back across the line, boom, here, for free, because you have to move your head back, right? And again, Spence doesn't really fight off the front foot. He doesn't have those kinds of pull counters. Um, and it's interesting, too, because we see that, right? And let's just go ahead and watch a little bit of his heavy bag work. And again, every time he just recrosses the line here, right, he's getting a good contact with the bag, which is good for his kinetic chain, right? And again, he's learning to drive the weight with two feet, right? Again, a big, big, big part of using the heavy bag is driving our weight with two feet each time we hit the bag so we can jolt our kinetic chain, and that's how we get in shape, right? And he's doing a good job of driving his weight into it. But nothing used for that beat, boom, what's there? right? What's after that beat? It's not very deliberate, okay? Now, I want to take a look real quick at a clip of Crawford being deliberate on the bag, okay? Now, we're going to take a look at him getting on the bag here. He jabs it when he gets to the front foot, right? He gets on the line, jab, right? Okay, cool. Stepping jab here. Now, he's going to get on the line here, pull counter, Okay, now this is one of those huge fundamental differences between somebody like Crawford and someone like Spence is that 
Almost every single time Spence gets on the line, he throws a punch. Whether it's his lead hand or his rear hand, he's almost always throwing a punch. And it is almost always his lead hand. But he also doesn't know what to do again with his hands to throw a hard punch, which compromises his ability to understand what he's supposed to do with his shoulders and the rest of his kinetic chain, which is why he throws his punches and his head's always in the same spot. This is going to make it very easy for someone like Crawford to utilize those weight transitions. And again, say he just threw his rear hand, and now he's pulling his weight back, and he's throwing his rear hand again. Right? It's very similar to being in this position, and then he's going to pull counter from here. Right? Pull. Boom. Here he is getting to the line. Pull. Boom. So he can fight off of that front foot position. Now, moving through the line again, circling. Boom, boom. Practicing his head movement a little bit. And again, another pull counter. Right? And then here, where's that move? Okay. So again, another pull counter here. Whoops, I went all the way to the back. He's going to get on the line here. Boom. Pull. Step. Control with the line. Bop, bop, bop. Um, and, and again, just a very dynamic style of working the heavy bag. Much more, I'll say, realistic in terms of boxing and fighting, even though there's part of... Spence's pace that I really like, where he gets to the line each time, it's just not a lot of athletic movement, it's not a lot of variety, it's not a lot of different things, it's not a lot of utilizing down, up, to set up his punches. And notice in this sequence, Crawford is going to use the coiling of, or the, of the pull counter, of the pull, to set up the punch, right? And this idea is very important because this is the move that he knocked out... Um, uh, Indongo with, right? He gets to the line here, pull, boom, right? It was more exaggerated. He might be jumping off the line too, but very, very similar motion, okay? Now, let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, before we take a look at the... We've got another heavy bag clip here of Crawford, um, and then we have a good heavy bag video we're going to take a look, but again, here's Crawford getting on the line, one, one, two, and now he's on the front foot, pull, two again. Very dynamic, right? But also... Very quick, right? Boom, 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 right? A lot of beats in a very low amount of time. And then he still has a very similar motion down, up, getting to the line. A lot of beats again. Circling. Pretty decent. Some cool stuff. Um, and then pull counter. Gets on the line, pull counters the back. Now he's going to get on the line. Slips to the front foot, pull counter, left hook, right? Again, circling the bag, interacting with it here, and boom, boom, right? And now again, he's going to go boom, boom, right? Much more dynamic, and again, he, can, he has much more higher variety of things that he's practiced, right, at an athletic pace because that's a very high, quick pace, right? Slip, punch, right? Pull, punch, right? Um, and again, there's just not a lot of that stuff going on in Errol Spence's bag work, right? Which means that it's not going on in his, in his fights either, okay? Now, <laughs> this pace that Crawford's at right here, it's very similar, right? Driving his weight into the bag, two foot punching, boom, 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 boom. Very similar to the one that, that Spence has, right? Very, very similar pace, two feet, 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 two feet. Right? And he's trying to keep his weight and manage his weight. Right, Very similar drills here. Adding a little bit of speed to it. And again, Crawford's understanding of what he's supposed to be doing and practicing on the heavy bag is, you know, even though the formulaic part of it from Spence is very, very good, right? where he's always on the line, right? and he can, he can measure how his, the intensity, oh, can I do this for three, three minutes? Let's find out. Let's just do it for three minutes. You know, and Crawford's is, I don't want to say more relaxed, but the goal here with these punches, right? Again, where's his defense? Where's his ABC? Right? There's all this other stuff that he's neglecting, right? In favor of just focusing on driving his weight from the two feet into the bag with these types of punches, right? Two feet, two feet, two feet, two feet, two feet, two feet. And it's more about getting a connect, 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 connect than doing absolutely everything correctly, right? Because Driving and, and utilizing our entire kinetic chain, each beat and each this, each that is more important than doing everything this way or that way or this way um, uh, in some circumstances, right? Like, again, we have two different styles of heavy bag work. 
Anyway, anyway. Um, obviously, you have your sharp stuff, but a lot, of t a lot of your training is focused on driving your weight into the bag, right? That sounds silly, but that's obvious, but that's obvious, but that's obvious, right? Anyway, very similar style as Errol Spence's, right? Because that's what Errol Spence is doing with his weight, right? And with his bag work, right? Trying to get as much weight into the bag. Two feet, two feet, two feet, two feet, two feet, right? It's not super dynamic. A little bit of power, right? A little bit of effort. Very low amount of head movement because he's mostly always on the line with the bag. He's very close. This is another problem that I, I have with Spence's work here is he doesn't actually get all that. He doesn't practice his longest reaching punches, right? And this makes me think that his reach advantage is going to be, um, or rather his height is not going to be an advantage for him because he's not actually um, throwing his punches from full range, right? Now, like, there's, like, all kinds of stuff about that that's, like, important, not important, you know, but more importantly is and we're going to take a look at him on the pads, too. That's, like, a big flaw in his training, but the pace at which he's working here is, is more about like kinetic chain, 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 kinetic chain. It's not like this blistering pace, right? That's a decent combination, right? Doom, boom, boom. Um, and now we're going to get back to the Crawford stuff that's really good, okay? Because he's going to start getting really deliberate here, right? A little bit faster of a pace, okay? And now... Look him throw this rear hand here, right? Boom, 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 pull, boom, pull. Now he's deliberately doing something after making contact with his right hand, okay? He's getting his weight specifically, boom, 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 to the ground, bop, 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 and keeping his momentum flowing, getting to the line, bop, pull, bop, pull, okay? And uh, it's it's very similar pace that he was doing with with this earlier, right? The taps, right? Tap, 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 right? Except there's a pull, boom, pull, boom, pull, boom, pull, right? At the pace at which he's working when we get there, right? And it's very cool. And notice he's trying to do something with his weight every time it's supposed to move, okay? <clears throat> and again... It just kind of shows the, the leaps and bounds, I'll say, in differences. Again, look at him. Beautiful work here. Boom, pull, boom, pull, boom, pull, boom, boom. Beautiful, beautiful work from Crawford here. And again, going back to his regular drilling, just to keep himself busy, right? Keep yourself working for the three minutes um, because there's no breaks in the, in the fights, right? But again, a lot of the work that Crawford's doing is very deliberate, right? Controlling the line, beat, 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 right? And then practicing with some intensity. But really, really, really beautiful work from Crawford. A lot of really, really great stuff. And again, a lot of very deliberate work, okay? Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at, oh, and real quick, when he walks to the line, right, and he's just chilling on the heavy bag, pull, boom. Right? It's the exact same uh, drill that he's doing right here. Right? Here you go. Boom. Same move. Right? Beautiful work. Again, we fight how we train. Right? We fight how we train. If you guys want the most complete combat system in boxing, check out the Fouts Boxing Combat System. Uh, it teaches you what to do with your weight at every beat, at every stage of the fight. Okay? It's the only fully comprehensive fight, co fight system out there that understands that we drive our weight from both feet, not just one, okay? So check it out. Um, and uh, also, the things that Errol Spence doesn't know how to do, um, I will prove to you in the first video that you watch that I know how to do them and I can teach them to you, okay? If you want a left hook like Ryan Garcia, if you want punching power like Tank Davis and you want to learn how to really snap and throw your punches hard, check out the Fouts Boxing Combat System. I will teach you what to do with every single piece of your kinetic chain. Okay? So anyway, check this out. Boom, pull, boom. Right? Now real quick, check again. We want to think about how deliberate he is every single time he gets to this position with his weight. Where's his next move? Pull, down, up, down, nothing. Right? When he gets off the line with this uppercut here. Boom, down, nothing. He doesn't utilize 
the down motion in his rhythm at all. Okay, now real quick, watch this rhythm here, up, down, up, down, up, right? And we can see him playing with it here. He's not min-maxing it. He's not maximizing his ability to do this or whatever. Um, so there's a lot of room for growth, okay? Um, but we can see that he was getting into a flow right there. Now, again, a very casual pace from Errol Spence, right? Not a very high pace, not... Decent, some defense, jab, catch, jab, 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 catch, jab, jab. Okay, cool stuff. <clears throat> um, now, Derek James is uh, orthodox while he's southpaw right now, which he should because um, uh, I think he's training for Ugas here, right? Bop, bop, pull, bop. Block the body shot on the front foot. Now watch this. Bop, down, up. Watch him go down. Down, block, up. And then block, and then exits the line up. Now, again, there's all these holes where there's nothing going on with Spence's weight, right? And what do I mean by that? Well, we can see that he's got a broken active guard, right? It's not really active. He just goes on the line, off the line, on the line, off the line, on the line, off the line. Right, a little bit of pull here, bop, 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 block down, up. Right, we can see that's not a great combination though. Um, I don't like that. I do want to commend um, Derek James on his pad work, by the way. Even though I don't think he's doing everything correctly, um, and obviously there's stuff that he can add to make this stuff better. Um, most of it's pretty good. Uh, it's all really tough to do um, in the open stance like this and have like this a great routine. You know, and he can do the routine with you, right? So it's brilliant, brilliant work. Um, I think that for the most part, um, this uh, pattern that Derek James has, um, and again, real quick, I want to talk to you guys about this while we watch this Spence stuff. Um, and again, think about how deliberate he is exiting the line with his up or after his rear hand when you're watching it. But people are saying that, oh, I bet he's fixed that stuff since then. He fixed this, he fixed that, he fixed this, he fixed that. Errol Spence is a lifelong athlete making this, this mistake, right, of falling off balance after he throws his rear hand. And again, watch him throw his rear hand right here. Boom. What does he do with his weight after? Right? What does he do with his weight after? It's not get to the ground, right? But he's a lifelong, a lifelong athlete making this mistake, still beating huge high-level athletes up, okay? The routine that him and Derek James have been working on here, they've been working on this for years and years and years and years and years to get it this good, to get it to the point where they can go and get a decision against Sean Porter, where they can, they can get a decision against Danny Garcia. They're not going to always be aware of what tiny little tweaks need to be made because so much goes into this routine. There's, this is his life's work here. Right and saying, oh, he, they fixed this already. They fixed that already. Right. This is his. This is a culmination of his entire life's work. Is what's going on on the pads here. A combination of everything this guy knows that he could possibly say to make Errol Spence be successful against Ugas. Right. Everything. It's all in here. There's nothing that he's like. Right. Anyway, speaking of that, check out the Fox Boxing Combat System. You know, speaking of life's work, right? Check it out. I can teach anyone how to punch hard. Anyone. Man, female, doesn't matter. Man, woman, man, female. Anyway, woman. Um, it's not easy to incorporate a change that's still going to validate the rest of your system. To find a way to, to make a, an improvement, Right? And to know exactly what it is to, to improve, especially because the idea of using the down-up motion in driving from both of your feet is, is integral to your ability to understand how the rest of technique and boxing works. And if you don't understand that type of stuff, uh, your system doesn't make sense. You can't really teach people how to fight if you can't teach how to connect their tools to the ground. Okay? Um, and again, I'm the first coach in history to have a, a uh, to teach two foot punching, to teach people to drive from both feet, 
to teach people to punch that way, to teach people to move that way. Um, so everyone's trying to do their best with what limited knowledge they have. And again, I want to say that the the rhythm and the pace, if you guys watch some of this stuff, is like Mayweather-esque, right? Thank you, Fight Hub. Appreciate the work, right? In that, in that it's like this continual sequence, but also Mayweather has this other style where he's getting on and off the line, and that's what this looks, on and off the line, right? which teaches you the shoulder faint timing, but it's also super important that you learn to connect the idea that you have to get on the line with your opponent while defending yourself. You don't just get to be in your boxing stance, hold your hands up, and wait for your opponent to step on your line forever. At some point, you have to learn how to step forward, control the line, or attack your opponent while maintaining your two-foot structure, while maintaining your ability to still be athletic. Check out the Vouts Boxing Combat System. I already did all the hard work already figured it all out, all ready to show you guys how it all works. Now, we're going to take a look at some Crawford on the mitts a little bit um, and talk about how he kind of utilizes some of that rhythm, right? So again, down, up, using a whole com combination on one weight transition, down, right? And he's going to try to keep that rhythm up, down, try to block on it, boom, Right? He gave you a little pivot on it that time, right? Up, down, up, down. Comes back to the line with punches, right? And he's trying to find a way to utilize that down motion after attacking for defense, right? Boom, boom. And then right back to the line with counters. And again, it's a very important idea, right? In, in understanding that that motion is there no matter what. Right? Even though we don't see Errol Spence practicing it a lot, even though we don't see the down motion there, up, down. He just did it on accident. It was inevitable. Right? Because this is how your body works. And uh, completely unable to manage his weight there because he doesn't factor in that he has to do something with his weight in that motion. Right? Or rather, he doesn't know what it is that he's supposed to be doing. Now, I like this stuff from Crawford too. Um, the combinations, boom, 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 boom. Um, even though this is not necessarily the same pattern that he was working before, tap, tap, hard shots, connecting the line really quickly, um, and learning how to control the line with one beat and then attack it with the next, right? Some really cool stuff. Ooh. Um, again, a lot of the stuff in Crawford's um, stuff with the managing of the way up, down, up, down, um, is really good. Um, and again, that's what makes Crawford such a great athlete is because there's not a lot of wasted movement with the down and the up and the rhythm and the way that he learns to drive his weight and get back, get his weight back to the line. Um, are there any other clips we didn't look at? I don't know. I don't think so. I think we covered them all in here. Um, but... Um, Yeah, um, I think that Crawford trains, you know, well, obviously if Crawford's one of the best fighters in boxing, you know, uh, he's definitely, you know, top two. He's probably number one right now, um, especially if he beats Spence. Now, I want to say only if he really beats Spence, like KO, you know, he's still got to annihilate Spence because, again, Spence is hard to fight. Um, but Spence makes a lot of flaws. Um, so I do think Crawford needs um, an impressive impressive win um, over, over Spence to be pound for pound number one guaranteed, right? Um, but I do think that there are very few fighters who could even hold a candle to Terrence Crawford. Um, I think he's, you know, absolutely incredible. You know, possibly the best fighter of our generation. Um, you know, there was a time where I thought Loma was going to be that guy. Um, but as the gap in skill has closed um, in his weight class, I don't know what to say. He hasn't just he just hasn't been a finisher, you know. He gets like uh, a little bit screwed because he's not a <laughs> fighting going backwards fighter, and he's the smaller guy, so people just flood the line against him, and he's just losing. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I think that Crawford he does need still an impressive victory, but I don't think anybody trains as well as Crawford. I don't think anybody understands what they're supposed to be doing in the ring, 
as well as Crawford. I don't think anyone understands what their body is supposed to be doing as well as Crawford. Definitely not. Even Usyk and uh, Lomachenko are not as good at athletes. Um, Tank Davis, not as good. Um, Tank Davis is pretty good at this stuff. But Crawford is better. Crawford's faster. I believe Crawford probably hits harder. Um, he's sharper. He's going to find the holes faster. Um, yeah, I think... Uh, yeah, anyway. Um, so Spence, again, he's not really a chaser, right? He can't really set punches up and, and close the distance against you really quickly because his heavy bag work, he doesn't chase the heavy bag, right? He doesn't practice his pendulum steps. He doesn't practice chasing the bag. At best, it's 1-1-2, one, one, right? Very, very shallow stuff. When he moves up in weight, that'll be especially egregious, Um once he starts fighting people who are, you know, his height, when he fights people who are bigger than him, if he can't get a good pendulum step and real, really chase them or control them with a leaping hook, he absolutely will not win any fights. Um, no, he'll win some, you know, against the smaller guys and, like, the less strong. Um, we'll have to see what happens with Spence when he moves up to 154 because after this ass-whooping, uh, that's exactly what I'm spe expecting. Uh, anyway, if you guys enjoyed the film study... Uh, and you guys are looking for someone to look over your content like this, check out the Fouts, check out the, my Patreon, um, and I'll teach you how to fight. I'll watch your film. I'll watch how you move and you train and this, and I'll make suggestions, and I'll help you become the fighter you want to be. Uh, if you want to learn how to do it yourself, check out the Fouts Boxing Combat System. It's got, you know, over 40 hours of content of coaching and teaching and theory and all in the style of two-foot punching to help you learn to organize your weight, move around the drills that you should be working on. Um, and these drills are not just going to help you you know, become a better fighter. They're going to make you a better athlete. They're going to make you stronger. They're going to make you hit harder. And they're also going to help you learn and understand and conceptualize what's going on in the ring. And that's one of the most beautiful things about these drills is these drills are also going to teach you what fighting looks like and feels like. Now, the first time you do them, I do want to warn you, when you realize how slow you are, and, <laughs> uh, you're going to be like, this can't be it, right? This can't be how boxing really works, but it is, okay? And you'll see that there's measured places for you to grow and, and ways to get better. Um, it's actually a more empowering feeling than a defeating one. So anyway, check out the Fuzz Boxing Combat System. Great reviews as well. All that great stuff, yada, yada, yada. Thanks, guys.